welcome back now in this uh, video we are going to start a very important topic regarding the telescope the use of telescope in surgery the basic concept of what is a telescope what is a laparoscope thoracoscope and the and other types of scopes that we are going to usually use in various types of surgery so one by one let's start with the concept of various scopes so basically whenever we talk about a laparoscope or a thoracoscope or a cystoscope please remember all these forms of different scopes like here the urs urethrorhinoscope the hysteroscope or endoscopes all these are various varieties or different types of the other names of a telescope depending on the type of use where they are supposed to be used suppose if a telescope is being used for the abdomen to visualize the peritoneal cavity to do any intervention in the abdominal cavity then it will be called as laparoscope similarly for thoracic cavity the telescope will be called as thoracoscope for visualizing an intervention in the urinary bladder it will be called as cystoscope for urinary tract symptom uh, system especially for ureters the kidneys the pelvic part of the kidney the urethrorhinoscope hysteroscope for visualization of uterus endometrial cavity and endoscopes for visualization of any lumen in through the natural orifice endoscope so all these things are different names of the telescope depending on their use and what is a telescope telescope is an instrument with the help of which we can see the things from a distance right to visualize from a distance so the telescope this is one of the component of our video imaging system and this video imaging system is commonly used nowadays for any minimal access surgery so whenever we are performing any minimal access surgery this video imaging system is required and starting from uh, this telescope there are five important components of this video imaging system first one is telescope from we are just traveling from patient side towards the monitor then the first one is telescope and there is a camera attached to it over the eyepiece then go that uh, the proximal end of telescope there is a light cable and this light cable is attached to the light source and finally this camera system is sending signals to the monitor after analyzing the data that is transferred through the objective lens to the optical fibers and finally to the the proximal part of the telescope then the charge coupled devices that is ccd present in the camera system the head of the camera and then ccd then it will transfer the details to the monitor for display right and this light cable and light source this is going to help us in providing the proper illumination right this is video imaging system now in this video out of these five obviously we'll discuss one by one the details of all these five important components but in this video we'll be focusing on telescope now as far as the parts of telescope 
there are four important parts. This is from the proximal end towards the distal end. Distal end means the portion of the telescope that goes inside the abdomen or that goes inside the thoracic cavity. And proximal means that lies outside the abdomen or thoracic cavity. Right? So proximal part, the, we are traveling from proximal part towards the distal. The first part of the telescope is eyepiece. And just distal to that, usually the light post or light adapter portion is there, followed by shaft of the telescope, a long rod-like structure. And finally, at the distal end, and even inside the shaft, there are various lens. The objective lenses are there. In any telescope, three important things are there. The first property is the diameter of the scope. How much is the diameter of the circumference of the telescope, the rod, that shaft? Then second one is the angle of vision, also known as optical axis. What is the angle of optical axis? The angle between optical axis and the longitudinal axis of that scope. This is also important. This angle is very important. And finally, the third important property is the rod lenses number. How many rod lenses are there? More the number? more or better vision will be there, right? So three important things, the diameter, the angle of vision, and the number of rod lenses. Now this telescope we are discussing, but let's take an example of laparoscope. The telescope that is being used to Visualize the thing for diagnostic as well as therapeutic purpose in abdominal cavity. Then we are calling it as laparoscope. Now this laparoscope, the, it was first invented by the Hopkins. He was a British physicist and was discovered, this laparoscope or telescope was discovered in during 1952 and 53. And presently, we are using this type of telescope. There are two basic system. Previously we were using thin lens system and in this type of laparoscope they were having multiple objective lenses and these multiple objective lenses they were separated by the air column and this was conventionally used previously but it was having poor images. Why poor images? Due to insufficient light transmission and that's why the quality was very low. Poor quality images were there through this thin lens system laparoscope. Like this. Here you can see this is shaft. Here this is the light adapter. This is the proximal end and this is The distal end, this one, right? And what we have described here, the eyepiece, this is situated here, the eyepiece. Over this eyepiece, we are going to, either we can see with the naked eye, as well as if we want to display the images over the monitor, we'll have to take the help of camera head. And over this eyepiece, camera head can be fixed. We'll come to that. Right? Now, conventional telescope, I'm just trying to give you an idea regarding this. If you can see here, this is the distal end and this one is proximal end. The eyepiece, the light cable adapter, the op, this, there are various thin lenses like this. One, two, three, four, and like this. There are thin lenses here and they're separated by air gaps, this one. 
air gaps in between, the long air gaps. By the side of these air gaps and thin lenses, here you can see on this side as well as this side, the, on the periphery and more towards the superior portion, we are having optical fiber zone with the help of which the light is coming through this light cable adapter, through the light cable and through these optical fiber zone, the light is being transmitted at the tip of the laparoscope. Now, that light is being reflected by the target organ. Now, this target organ, the image is being transmitted through these objective thin lenses traveling from here and it was again received over the eyepiece area and that can be again taken over the display monitor or can be visualized through the naked eye over an eyepiece area, right? So something is, let's say, the light is coming from this side, going towards this optical fiber zone. Just take it as a straight line. I'm just drawing live. That's why usually it is the light travels in a straight line. And this will be again reflected by the target organ and it will come like this, right? Traveling the objective lenses and it will be visualized over this eyepiece. Either we can visualize it through the naked eye, right? Or it can be visualized by mounting a camera head over this, like this. Camera head consists of the charge coupled device that is known as CCD along with coupler. We'll discuss it later on. So it's fine. Now you can see how the light is going, how it is being reflected by the target organ and then again is being focused by these objective lenses separated by large air gaps and due to the presence of these large air gaps in conventional telescope the vision is not so good fine another important property of this telescope is angle of vision you can see here this is the longitudinal axis of this telescope right and this is a almost straight. Here you can see the optical axis is again is parallel to the longitudinal axis. This is optical axis, the light that is going received by these objective lenses again. So they are parallel in zero degree. And if it is being the angle between the optical axis and longitudinal axis, as it increases like in this manner, we say it's a zero degree telescope, then 30 degree telescope, then 45 degree telescope like this and 70 degree and 120 sometimes also, 120. We'll come to that. This is angle of vision, means angle between the optical axis that is between the light rays and the longitudinal axis of the telescope. Now the second type of laparoscope that is present in laparoscopes, they have multiple rod lenses. Instead of thin lenses, they are having rod lenses, right? In the center and these rod lenses, they are going to replace the large air gaps, okay? And along with outer rim of optical fibers, similar to the previous one. So this is the present day laparoscope, the rod lenses, somewhat like this. The optical fiber zone, the rod lens, various rod lenses are there, we can see. Just to show you, just to give you an idea, let's suppose this is having five rod lenses and just see the air gaps reduced, very much reduced here. And this one is light adapter cable and this is the proximal end, right? Now here A 
means rod lens b is denoting air gap c again rod lens this d is optical fiber zone similar to that one and this is the light adapter and this is the area where we are going to just focusing uh, we can see with the help of this uh, view we can see through the naked eye as well as we can mount a camera over here camera head this is known as rod hopkins system rod hopkins system air gap is decreased number of rod lenses routinely it could be between 8 10 12 or 14 and the idea is more the number of rod lenses lesser will be the air gaps and that's why better will be the vision like here another important property is similar to that that we have discussed the, the angle of vision number of rod lenses then we'll come to the diameter also the similar to that conventional lenses what we have just explained here you can see the angle of vision straight zero degree straight laparoscope then 30 degree the tilt is there 45 degree and similar to that the 70 degree and so on the role of optical fibers in laparoscope is to carry light into abdominal cavity whereas the rod lens system they transmits the image from abdomen to camera and camera is usually attached to the proximal end of laparoscope and the role of camera is to capture the process and it displays the image on the monitor attached to it and this leads to a very good field of vision with minimal distortion this is the advantage of using this rod lens system hopkins rod lens system just to give you an idea till now we have discussed this part this one telescope this part is only known as telescope if we have attached something to the proximal part of telescope this portion this portion is known as camera head right this camera head contains two things the coupler this one the attachment between the telescope and the ccd and inside this camera head just proximal to the coupler there is ccd ccd means charged coupled device right it captures and analyzes the image and it sends to the monitor for display now the third important property of telescope is the diameter range it varies from 0.8 millimeter to 14 millimeter in laparoscopy the routinely in laparoscopic cholecystectomy or laparoscopic appendicectomy the routinely used laparoscope diameter is 10 millimeter 10 millimeter right and remember one thing the image brightness is directly proportional to the diameter of the scope means image brightness produced by a 2 millimeter scope will be less as compared to that produced by the 10 mm scope okay as the diameter increases the brightness can also be increased just to give you an example initially the laparoscope that was available a 5 mm scope was usually transmitting only 10 percent of the light as compared to the 10 mm scope okay 3mm laparoscope they are usually used in cases of diagnostic laparoscopy the previous operation already that is there and where we are expecting additions inside the peritoneal cavity and in pediatric patients 3mm laparoscope is usually used just to give you some examples some important points regarding laparoscope i am just discussing it in additions Pneumoperitoneum is initially created by the virus needle, especially in left hypochondrium, through the palmus point, or a modification can also be done, but it should be in left hypochondrium. 
and 3 mm scope if that is available we can insert and after inserting under direct vision we can convert it into 10 mm scope why we are converting it into 10 mm scope if we have already inserted the 3 mm scope because 10 mm scope is the minimum diameter scope that gives us full screen view full screen view like this full screen view only by 10 mm scope whereas let's say if you are using 5 mm or 2.8 mm or 3 mm that is going to give you only this much the area under what we have drawn here only this much is rest of the thing black so 10 mm scope is always preferable for laparoscopy remember it for full vision over the screen again as discussed based on angle of vision the telescope can be divided into zero degree also known as forward viewing laparoscope or a straight laparoscope then 30 degree the most common use laparoscope and even I prefer this 30 degree in most of the surgeries whatever I am doing in minimal access mode 30 degree then 45 degree is commonly used as thoracoscope more range of movement is possible in 45 degree as compared to 30 degree and 0 degree with lesser movement lesser deviation then 70 degree endoscopes they are usually used for 70 degree endoscopy in ENT even in various diseases of uh, larynx and 120 degree is used for bladder neck surgery right 120 degree telescope for bladder neck surgery now what is what are the various advantages of using laparoscope uh, basically three important advantages it provides an unobstructed view of dissecting area from a distance and there are more space for the instruments to use and third we can look around the corners also by using laparoscope so more space more freedom to look around the corners and it provides an unobstructed view of dissecting area take care all right and there are some important points regarding laparoscope a few problems like fogging of the lens very important scene usually we are going to encounter fogging of the lens and it makes the image dull and hazy so how to when we are expecting fogging of the lens whenever we are inserting a cold laparoscope inside the peritoneal cavity we are supposed to have this fogging of the lens and to prevent it the fogging of the lens there are few methods we can use a sponge soaked in warm saline and just clean the lens the objective lens of the telescope or we can use povidone iodine solution for cleaning the lens or anti-fogging solutions can be used and sometimes the electric warmer flask is also there to help us to remove this fogging of the lens to prevent this second this fogging of the lens can occur first is whenever we are introducing the telescope inside the peritoneal cavity the cold telescope we are inserting inside the peritoneal cavity second due to passage of cold co2 by the side of laparoscope insufflation tube is connected to the optical trocar usually and that leads to passage of cold co2 just by the side of laparoscope it is going to do this the fogging of the lens and to prevent it what we are supposed to do is just to shift the insufflation to a port other than the camera port right now there are few nowadays flexible or semi-flexible laparoscopes are also available advantage is obviously we can flex the tip of laparoscope to any angle whatever desired right and then flexible types of laparoscope again a telescope's flexible types there are two types one is fiber optic based 
they relate the optical image as we have seen in the, the just 15 20 minutes back in the initially in this video the fiber optic zone so flexible type one variety is fiber optic based and second variety is chip on a stick based camera uh, based uh, telescope or laparoscope not camera ccd means charge coupled device right in fiber optic base when whenever we are going to compare these two types there is poor image quality as compared to rod hopkins system in this one in ccd chip on a stick based image is converted to electrical signals and then transferred for display here image is directly being sent not being converted into electrical signals Whereas in CCD type chip on a stick, it is converted into electrical signals, then transferred for display. There is another design where they use a single monochrome charge coupled device chip with alternating red, green and blue illumination to form a color image. And you already know that this RBG, this red, green and blue colors are primary colors and one thing is we can use the three different chips for these three colors or another scene we can create or we can take the help of alternating red green and blue illumination to get the same effect and we are not going to use three chips here right for three separate color filters we are not going to use it so three separate color filters are not required three chips are not required this is another design for this recent laparoscope what is the advantage of this? This reduces space requirements and there is advantage of high resolution monochrome CCD chip technology and this can be used, right? Now these flexible scopes, they have four ways deflection and all round viewing angles. So very good for upcoming minimal access surgery for oncology, right? In future, this can be widely used for MANS. I'm saying it MANS, the minimal access neoplastic surgery in future. In the same range that there is a telescope that is available, we know it as endochameleon. This is a telescope with adjustable viewing direction between 0 to 120 degree, this endochameleon. We can adjust the angle of the tip of this telescope from zero degree to 120 degree while operating it. Few important points regarding this laparoscope. The tip of the laparoscope should be cleaned before introduction to peritoneal cavity every time. The second one is this, this is a sealed system. So any damage, it will result in cloudy image formation and why there is cloudy image formation? Because there is accumulation of moisture under the lens system. Okay. Finally, depending on the diameter of the telescope, there are various uses of telescope. Very important slide this one. Here you can see the 0 0.8 centim 0 0.8 millimeter diameter and 10 centimeter length commonly used. This is used for diagnostic CL endoscope. This is diagnostic CL endoscope. CL endoscope means CL means related to salivary glands. If there is a stone in the salivary duct, it can be removed with the using this diagnostic CL endoscope and the diameter of these telescopes are 0.8 millimeter only. And this endoscope can also be used in various oral maxillofacial surgery. Similarly, the 1.5 mm for urology, let's say URS. Again, 1.8 mm URS in urology. URS means urotrorenoscopy purpose, diagnostic and sometimes yes, as well as therapeutic also. A wider diameter is required. Then in gynecology, then for office hysteroscopy, known as VersaScope, this is 1.8 mm. 
again 2 mm is for pediatric age group the 3 mm for pediatrics as well as this diagnostic laparoscopy initiation and in difficult abdomen for having an access and later on we are going to convert it as 10 mm score then 4 mm is for cystoscope and hysteroscope then 5 mm these are the length of scopes available whatever I am writ have written here these are the length of scopes commonly used this is the diameter this one is diameter then 5 mm is for laparoscope then diagnostic laparoscopy in ovarial drilling in cases of PCOD then tubal potency test in infertility cases and video assisted cardiac surgery mitral valve surgery in mitral, mitral valve surgery usually 30 degree endoscope is used with 5 mm diameter and for atrial ablations in video assisted cardiac surgeries atrial ablations 0 degree is used again 5 mm then 8 mm 8 mm telescope is used for single puncture sterilization known as laparocator and finally this is a 10 mm one the most commonly used laparoscope 31 and 34 centimeter length is available a standard laparoscope this is the first whatever we have just gone through this is the first telescope that is going to give us full screen full screen view right and it is also used for video assisted cardiac surgery especially in mitral valve surgery and atrial ablations it, it is used and finally the 12 mm this 12 mm scope or this 14 mm scope that is used for in robot, robotic surgery and also known as stereoscope it is having two objective lenses and eyepieces and usually used for robotic surgery okay now very important point these telescopes are autoclavable but these should be autoclave with recommended wire trays that is available for these telescope okay carefully used advantages of using a larger diameter scope is for better field of vision first and brighter image why brighter image because the larger diameter will have more optical fiber in optical fiber zone right a uh, few important points regarding the zero degree in zero degree telescope optical axis and longitudinal axis they are parallel and they are not good for thoracoscopy this is important zero degree telescope is not good for thoracoscopy so it should not be used why because we usually go inside the thoracic cavity between two ribs and there are very limited space and if we want to see the upper or lower area of the pleural cavity will have to turn the telescope and that will or that may damage or that may fracture the rib very limited movement is possible there so zero degree is not used for thoracoscopy the better would be the 30 degree or 45 degree sometimes 30 degree optical axis makes 30 degree angle with longitudinal axis and the field of vision as compared to 0 degrees more, 30 degree more, left and right. And just by turning the cable to the left, we can see the right side and vice versa. Right? And it may be used for thoracoscopy. We are routinely using this for almost all the surgeries, the laparoscopy, the cardiac surgeries. But yes, it can be used for thoracoscopy also, 30 degree. In 45 degree, good for thoracoscopy, preferred. An optical axis makes 45 degree angle with the longitudinal axis. It gives more range of vision. 70 degree, I have already discussed for ENT, the laryngeal visualization. Then 120 degree, optical axis forms 120 degree angle with longitudinal axis. Good for bladder neck surgery, usually used in robotic surgery. Not commonly used, but for specialized purpose. This 120 degree telescope is used. Now, very important question. How to hold the laparoscope? Here, just I'm trying to explain you. Here, I've written A, B, C, D, and E. A denotes 
for a right-handed surgeon I'm talking about accordingly we can adjust it for a left-hand surgeon also for a right-handed surgeon A denotes the thumb of the surgeon or uh, the camera person B denotes the index finger and this arc denotes the arc formed by the index finger and the thumb and this is the index finger is coming behind this light cable right and this C denotes the middle finger and there is a gap between index and middle finger and through this gap we are holding the camera like this the scope is being passed between the gap of our index finger and middle finger now this D is our ring finger and the E is the little finger so these three fingers they are just below the scope and this index finger is above the scope there is a gap between index finger and middle finger through which the scope is being passed and the thumb is lying here on the side of these three fingers but that is coming surrounding it this light cable and with the left hand we can according to our need we can rotate this light cable to this side nine o'clock or six o'clock or to that side three o'clock or six o'clock without actually mobilizing the scope right so this is how we should hold the laparoscope during any operative procedure few important points regarding so one thing is clear now this portion is only known as telescope first thing is clear this is uh, the light adapter and this one is light cable going and this light cable will be attached to the light source from where we are going to receive the light for illumination this is uh, this entity is known as camera head it contains two important things the coupler that is the segment attaching the CCD with the telescope and here lies the charge coupled device it will receive the uh, electrical signals or images I should say electrical signal and it will analyze it interpret it and it will reflect it through this wire to the displaying monitor clear so this is telescope plus camera head camera head contains two things coupler and charge coupled device and finally the, there is a very frequently used term high definition this high definition term is ideally to be used only with camera or monitor it should not be used with the telescope why because telescope is just a part of that transmission the optics only and uh, this high definition is we can usually um, theoretically and ideally we should use this high definition word for our camera or the display monitor right so i think i have covered most of the basic points regarding a laparoscope this will be beneficial for uh, undergraduates as well as postgraduates so any query you can write to me thank you thanks a lot